Hello and welcome to this short tutorial about Theatrics, a new add-on that I've developed uh, with assets that I've been using for the past 12 years, basically moving lights, truss and staging. Uh, so first of all, we'll just talk through the installation. Uh, first of all, preferences, install and then locate your um, DCD Theatrics zip file that you've downloaded. Install that and enable the add-on. Now this is an important thing. Basically the library path is where the assets are stored. Um, I'm someone who likes to put my assets in a custom location rather than having them compiled into um, Blender versions which takes up space basically. So instead um, basically you unzip the file and then choose the folder where the theatrics.blend file is. Now it's just the directory for the file. You don't actually have to click the file. So just accept and it should all be up and working. So first of all, I'm just gonna go through and talk through some of the features that um, theatrics has um, and we'll just build a quick scene here. So first of all, we're gonna get rid of the default cube and light. Um, so first of all, let's import a stage. So you have four options of stage currently, uh, a rectangle, a square, and then a rectangular um, triangle, and then a square triangle. Uh, you have the ability to um, array these objects quickly. So let's just import three on the X axis and two on the Y axis and click stage and it will import. Now, what we'll do is just move these into the center of the scene and move it forward 1.8 meters. All right. So next, what we're gonna do is only have one row and only array it two along the x-axis. We'll move that forward by 1.2 and then across by 1.2. Now we'll switch over and import a 1200 by 1200 meter half section. So these are the triangles. We'll make sure it's just one and one. So we'll move that over 1.8 meters and then uh, flip it on the X axis. Um, one thing to know is that these are all imported as the same data block. So basically, if you import something that's already existing, it will reference the same data block and reference the same material so that you don't have a blend file with multiple um, references to materials that then slows down the performance of your render. So basically, instead of um, importing another 1200 by 1200, I'm just gonna do exactly the same thing and duplicate it, uh, the data block and then move it over by six meters and flip it on the X axis. Now at the front of the stage, we're going to use a 24 by 1200 half. And you'll see, again, these are just like the square ones except rectangular. We'll move it forward 1.2 meters and then flip it on the X axis, oops, there we go. Um, so you'll see here, if you look at the data block, if I import another one, I'll just snap to it. You'll see that it adds the same, um, uses the same data block. So we'll just move that across 2.4 meters. Now, because they use the same data block, it means that if you change one, um, obviously the other ones will change. So if I move this down by 2.5 meters, you'll see the other object changes, which is exactly what we want. We'll do the same for these square triangle pieces. Just move them down 250 mil. Now I want to decrease this, but I want these to stay at 500 mil above the ground. So what I'm gonna do is create a new data block by clicking the number two, and then we can then reduce this height and down to 250 mil. 
Now I'm going to add a step in, but watch what happens when I import a new 2400 by 1200 half. You'll see that it is the same height as the previous versions that I have. So it's recognized that this data block is already there. Um, so I'm going to have it as a 250 mil high instead of the actual object, which is what we want because we're just going to put it up 250 mil. So it sits on the top of the square one, a uh, rectangular one, and we're going to flip it uh, on the X axis by one. Again, we'll duplicate that data block, move it across by 2.4 meters and then flip on the X axis. And there we have our stage. Now, next of all, we're going to add in some lights. So first of all, just make our cursor back to the world origin. And I found that for this stage, five meters is best above the stage for these lights. And we're just going to move it um, across three meters on the x-axis. So you have a choice of two moving lights currently. You have a spot mover or a wash mover. A spot mover is a fixture that has way more features than a wash mover. It's a much more expensive, so therefore you don't wanna fill your lighting rig with all of those if you don't have to. So usually what we'll do is we will have um, the standard kind of thing, which is a spot, wash, spot, wash, spot, wash, LX bar. So we're gonna import five spot movers. We're going to choose the rotation as 180 so that they're pointing down. By default, the fixtures come as if they're sitting on the ground. And then we're going to offset each one by 1.5 meters. Now with those in, we just click the spot mover and it will import five of them. Now, whilst we're here, we can import a piece of truss. We're going to choose the try 300 mil with the apex down. And we're going to choose three of them because you'll see why in a second. There. So we have a nice lighting truss now with our spots on it. Um, but we're going to add washers in between these spots to just give a general wash of the stage. So we're going to move the 3D cursor over in between. And now we're going to decrease to, to four and then we're going to click wash mover and it will import those washers. You can see the difference between the spots move, spot movers and the wash movers. Spots have more of a um, top hat and the wash movers don't. So, with each of these lights, the spot mover will have way more features than the wash mover, um, but each of the lights is basically the same. So you have one empty that controls the location and the hanging position. And then you'll have the rotation of the head. Now this is controlled on the X and Z axis, so you can point these any way you want and they have a range of about 140 degrees in each way before they hit which there's constraints on them so we're going to choose all of the rotations for our wash and we're just going to rotate them on the x-axis by 20 degrees so that they cover the stage also going to, on these outside ones, just move them in a little by 20 degrees. So there's not so much spill on the ground. Now, you'll find that each of these lamps don't work as you think they do. So don't change any of the properties under the light. You'll see that they have drivers that control all of these. What you want to do is go to the custom properties and this is how you control the light. So first of all, with the wash, it's just a basic fixture. We're gonna change this to 60 degrees. We're going to make it a nice lilac blue and we're just gonna turn them on to 1200 watts. Um, you can copy and paste the color as well as the values. 
So now our movers are on. So let's have a look at them first. We're going to switch over to cycles. Uh, make sure it's GPU. Uh, we're going to decrease this down to 2048. Uh, turn on denoise. I like to use optics for viewport and then open image denoise for um, rendering. And then we'll move over into cycles rendering. So you can see the four lights are on there. And now let's turn on these washes. So one way you can obviously keyframe um, the rotation of it, or what you can do is go to the constraints and set a target. So what I'm going to do is we'll set a empty. We'll bring it up onto the stage. We'll just move it forward by 2.4 meters. So it's nice in the center of stage. And now what we can do is point this moving light to the empty. And we'll do that for the rest of these spots. And you'll see now that these moving lights, no matter where this empty is, will follow it. So that makes it a lot easier. Now, with these spots, you'll find that in the settings, there's way more features because they're much more complicated than a wash moving light. So first of all, I'm just going to turn them on to 2400 and I'm going to insert a gobo and the fifth one is my favorite. Um, so we'll do that for the rest of the moving lights. And there, now we have all our lights on and pointing where we want them. Now, I for the volumetric lighting, what the easiest way to do, I found, is obviously we'll turn off our background so there's no light being emitted. And then you can use either the principal volume or volume scatter. Uh, volume scatter is a little more efficient um, when you don't need all of the realistic um, properties for um, volumetrics. So usually I will do a 0 0.001 or 0 0.005, depending how much I, how thick I want the volumetric beams to be. But there, as you can see, we've got our volumetric beams. Uh, we will just add in a quick ground plane and then set up our camera. At two, I think it was 89, and now oh, we can do 90. There. And then we'll render this out with the settings to 2048, noise threshold of 0 0.01, and yeah, we'll see what this looks like. And there's our render, a quick 29 seconds to render. Um, the denoising works nice. You still get to see those streaks um, and see that the light breaks up. But yeah, that is theatrics in a nutshell. Hope you enjoy.